When I was 13 years old, I put my SNES in a box in my attic, along with many of the fashionable items of the era. I moved on to the Nintendo 64. It wasn't until a few years later that I came across a copy of Donkey Kong Country at a swap meet for only $2 with a torn cover. I instantly remembered wanting to play through this game, having run it the sequel years back. I thought it would be an interesting flash back, and a good excuse to dust off the old SNES. I forgot about it, because I was going out of town the following summer, so it sat on the shelf, collecting dust for some months. Months turned to years, the cart was forgotten about. It wasn't until 2011 that I opened up an old box containing my broken PS2, my PS1 without cables, and a set of boxes containing various things that I pawned or stolen throughout my youth. Among them was that Donkey Kong Country cart. Now, over 20 years, I decided that maybe, maybe it was time that I dusted off the SNES and gave the game a go. I put the card in, hoping to finally play the Donkey Kong Country that rested in the back of my subconscious for the better part of a decade. The cover was severely damaged, and one thing I noticed after looking at the card online was that the ones that were released in stores were gray. This one was yellow and what I could only assume was a prototype of some sort. I do know that some of the Donkey Kong 64 carts are yellow, but this was an entirely different game. The front of the cover was completely ripped at the bottom, with that torn paper look that plastic carts do get over time. Someone had scrawled the words, Cold War 1989, with what I can only assume was a sharpie. Well, I did it. I switched the SNES into the on position. The game started as I thought it would, but there was no rare logo. Nor did the title screen make any mention of Nintendo. The beginning animation started with Cranky Kong turning the vinyl players per usual atop some metal beams. I was playing on a flat screen with the default SNES cable hookup, but the picture seemed a little grainier. The music was completely different. It sounded muffled, drowned out, even though it was the same song. In the normal game, based on YouTube videos, Donkey Kong would drop down and hit Cranky Kong while he enjoyed his record. Instead of a boombox, what looked like a hand melded with the red anvil fell on top of the player. Donkey Kong dropped down for the dance animation, but his graphic was off-center by about 15 pixels in every direction up and left. His hand was also elongated by about 3 inches. When Cranky throws the TNT barrel, the cart just freezes. I had to reset a few times and press start to even get the game to play. I had to quickly run Donkey Kong off the main map and into jungle hijinks before the game froze again. Donkey Kong's graphic was sadder. I went into a room which read Kong's Banana Horde, and the game locked up for three seconds before putting me on a weird island that wasn't in any of the game footage I saw online. There were fully rendered pirate skeletons, and Donkey Kong couldn't interact at all. I eventually had to commit suicide by jumping into the ocean, outlying the island, before I was returned to the entrance of Jungle Hijinks. I started to play through the game, but I noticed every time I made Donkey Kong jump on a barrel, the picture got grainier and more dark-tinged. It seemed as though a programming bug was making the screen more sepia tinged. The music was also way off. Most of the time, it was flipping between sound channels, and other times it wouldn't play at all. 
after Jungle Hijinks, I, I could move on to the next stage. Sawtooth Mines. Now this wasn't the stage that normally followed according to most guides I referenced online. I had to move Donkey Kong upwards to an unmarked area of the world map. It had a weird X on it, marked by two trees, and, and it was barely visible. It was a swimming stage with no music, and all the coral was red. The area looked more or less like a river of blood. I swam Donkey Kong downward with no collectible bananas. It wasn't until about three minutes of swimming downward, 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 that I noticed something that looked like a human eye emerging from the depths of the rocks painted into the backdrop. It was getting more visible the lower I swam. I also had to double tap the buttons because the swimming had a delay. I noticed an air meter after about three minutes. Finally, the screen froze and some text appeared. If you wish to enter Sawtooth Mines, first you have to pay the fine. The drowning animation of Donkey Kong was shown that was very disturbing. He clutched at his neck and pulled off, pulled off his tie. In a final display, as the life was just sucked out of him. The screen went black. It glitched out. I restarted with the white Donkey Kong sprite on a stage called In Limbo. It was just a typical rope swing that seemed to be cut and paste out of another stage, with a lot of glitches and missing parts of the floor that looked like pits but could be walked over. The various razor bees also couldn't damage me. I think it was impossible to die. I know this wasn't in the original game, but what concerned me more was that there was a trap door near the exit. I felt compelled to finish the stage, but more compelled to break through the trap door. I remember from other DKC games that if you reach a high enough height, you can break through them. I found a set of ledges at the start of the stage and wove, wove around the top of the map until I got to the end, occasionally jumping higher than the screen would allow. This whole process took over an hour. And I wasn't sure how much use my SNES had left. But I did it. I finally jumped off the top. I crashed through the trap door. Inside was a long hallway with only one Chinese character on the floor. At the end was a snake sprite. It may have been a prototype for the spring snake that was never in this game. The song DK Island Swing abruptly started, and there was some very weird text. My name is Adam. I'm 13. They've abducted and are holding my family captive. If you can read this, I'm about to be drowned to death. Please, send help before it's too late. I felt my spine begin to tingle as a 16-bit picture of a chimpanzee flashed for a quarter of a second. It was then that I realized Diddy Kong wasn't a playable character in this edition of the game. There was the abrupt sound of a monkey squealing. It sounded like it was in intense pain. The game finally launched Donkey Kong through a set of barrels. I decided to try to finish the game. So I was put back on the map. I finally entered Sawtooth Mines. It was a minecart stage, but the track never moved. I heard what sounded like a grainy, tinny voice begin to whisper. It was illegible. I jumped on the tracks, trying to figure out if there was a trick to it. The whispering began to sound like thunder. It hissed, but it was still illegible. I kept jumping on the track, thinking maybe the jumping was triggered by some timing with the voice. I tried endlessly to finish the level, but I assumed it couldn't be. I left the game on for a full 40 hours. I knew if I reset, 
I'd either have to start all over or the game might break completely. It was already extremely glitched. I left that little red SNES light on and I went to sleep. It was hard to sleep with the game running because Donkey Kong's animation and the speeding cart started to look sad after a while. The hissing was disturbing, but it seemed to be altering. Leveling. Equalizing. As I slept on my bunk bed, I heard the voice whisper. Sigh. Finally. Words. Sigh. sounded like an animal trying to form human words. I immediately picked up the controller and tried to make Donkey Kong jump, but there was no feedback for the player anymore. The 16-bit voice kept pleading. As the eye emerged from the blackness again, it zoomed out more and more until I saw that it was the grainy face of a disheveled ape with blood on its face. What have they done to my side? The voice hissed and crackled from the data technology, and then I paused the game, turned into a slideshow. A weird, weird slideshow of 16-bit images showing a weird laboratory in England. The visual is very hard to see on the 16-bit console. But there were obviously pictures of cages with apes being drowned in some kind of cage experiment. Many were being tortured while people took notes. The faces of the people in the images were completely blacked out but they looked to be middle-aged scientists. One shot was of one of them holding a dismembered ape head. One showed the people in a very familiar pose. One that I recognized. That. That. And Lestich, England. That was all I knew. But it continued. There was a real depiction of a destroyed human torso being eaten by an ape with shaven bloody fangs. The entrails were leading out into the other room. The torso had been dehumanized right down to a piece of meat. The next shot was a face and date tag of a prison convict who I assume had donated his body to science. I tried to go back to compare the two images of the eaten person and the convict to see if the body type was similar. <laughs> but I couldn't go back in the slideshow. You understand, right? <laughs> the last shot was just the title screen with the words, You'll Go Bananas 1989, in the normal game text font. I pressed start and was returned to the end of the level. Nowhere left to go. I couldn't reaccess Sawtooth Mines. Jungle hijinks was the only possible option. I went back into the Banana Horde room. Ended up back on the abandoned island. The skeletons looked more familiar. In fact, they were doing the same poses that the people in the slideshow were doing. After about 15 minutes, I found that if you pressed down and held A for three seconds, names would appear. All of them were rare employees that worked on the game. One was a larger, more ape-like skeleton that was the anomaly of the bunch. Its name was simply Adam, a.k.a. Mr. Bo Jangle with the sad, sad emoticon afterward. This time, when I made Donkey Kong commit suicide, 
The game truly froze. No resets. I tried finding some information about the card online, but it was to no avail. I didn't want to upload footage of the game because the gore, disturbing imagery was obviously going to get me flagged or banned on YouTube. I put the card up on eBay before being hit with a $600,000 lawsuit from the Rare Company, which was now a subsidiary of EA, I believe. I got sent a very threatening message that told me my life as a professional contractor and plumber was basically over if I ever released that cart to the general public. They insisted it was merely a prank regarding some of the rare employees just having fun. But I knew what I knew. The blood, the gore, the dead apes. That was no prank. Rare had done something terrible beyond my imagination to get the final Donkey Kong Country product onto store shelves. I told them that I had destroyed the cart, stopped the harassing phone calls, letters affectionately addressed to Super Fuckface Mario. It was evidently my plumbing profession had ruffled the feathers of some of the higher-ups. I still have the cart, though. It's in with the old college stuff. It'll sit there for days. Days will become weeks, months, years. The card will still be there, I promise. They're going to have to pry it from my cold, dead, fucking hands.